This video is part one of a video series I'm putting together documenting the process of building your own backyard pond. This is a small scale design. The pond will be approximately 11 feet by 7 feet and that's going to require a 15 by 20 foot rubber pond liner and also a 15 by 20 foot underlayment. The first step of this project is going to be to mark out the design of the pond and then begin to excavate the soil from that area. The first level is going to go down approximately a foot, maybe a little bit less. And then I'm going to begin a second dig. So there's going to be two tiers to the pond. The lowest part is going to be around two feet. So it's going to be a one foot dig followed by a one foot dig in the center. You'll see as we go along here. And the pond's going to go exactly where that cardoon plant is at. So that's coming out. That's the first step here. Got my tape measure, give myself some approximate markings, and I'm going to start to figure out exactly the placement of the pond. And now I'm just going to take my tape measure and mark out 11 feet long by 7 feet wide. This is the maximum area in which I want to dig out my pond. I'm just going to use some bricks to mark out those dimensions just to give myself a general idea. And just using a bit of rope, I'm going to go around those bricks and give myself a further defined space in which I can begin to excavate the soil from within. And because I had a nice layer of mulch in this area, there's no grass or weeds to contend with. So I'd highly recommend if you're going to build a pond to first mulch over the area and kill back all the vegetation. And there's our diamond in the rough. Now, rather than completely define the edging of the pond with a marking paint or something like that, which is commonly done, I'm just going to kind of freestyle this design first by excavating the center of the area in which I'm going to be building the pond. Then I'll go around and kind of work the edges and just kind of see how it flows in the landscape. The top 12 inches of soil is quite easy to dig out, so I'm just blowing through this really quickly. And what do you know, here comes Tweezy, always coming around the areas that I'm working looking for bugs or worms. So we're making progress here. I'm to the point now where I'm going to go ahead and remove the rope and the bricks just to give myself more room and area to work my shovel. And I'm starting to run into some roots at this point, mostly small roots from some of the larger trees that I recently took out in the area. And there we have it. The first step is almost done. I ended up digging this down a bit deeper in the end, as you'll see. But this gave me a general idea of the shape of the pond. The actual shape changes a little bit as well. And now I'm just marking out with my shovel the second tier, which I'll begin to dig out. And the soil here is a bit harder to dig out. There's a lot more clay, even more roots, but still definitely workable with a shovel. Just takes a bit more time. I tell you, it's the perfect time to be doing some pond building here in the early part of spring, just after getting all these rains and everything, the soil is quite soft. It's a beautiful day, not too hot, so I'm glad I'm getting this done now. And the further I go down, the harder it's becoming to dig. The soil here is very much clay, and not only is it harder to get that shovel down into the ground, but to actually get the soil off of the shovel, I'm having to bang it on the side of the wheelbarrow and sometimes scrape it off.
as you can see here, the stuff that I'm excavating at this point, if I just squeeze it, it sticks together like some dense clay. Anyway, we are making progress and things are starting to shape up here rather quick. Now after excavating all the soil, I use this hand tamper to pound everything down nice and flat. And after taking a step back and looking at the pond after tampering, I decided to go ahead and take a bit more soil off that top shelf and the bottom of the pond. So what you're looking at now is actually not the finished depth. All right, so it's the next day now, and after taking a bit more soil off that top shelf and the bottom of the pond, I'm now going around and cutting out any roots that are poking out, especially any sharp roots or rocks that I see. I want to remove those before I move on. And here's some of the larger roots that I had to dig out of this pond. Nothing too serious, but it did take quite a bit of work, so it's good to have a nice sharp shovel when doing this. Alright, with the roots gone, I'm just giving the pond now a quick sweep. Any wood chips that have fallen in here, as well as remnants of roots and some of the dirt clods. Just want to get everything nice and smooth and ready for the underlayment. Don't want any chance or any possibility of any punctures in the pond liner. The pond liner is very tough and it would be hard to do, but that's the reason we put the underlayment in and that's the reason I'm taking this extra step, just to make sure we go over everything nice and neat so we don't have to repair any mistakes. And there we have it, the pond is now completely dug. You can also see along the edge there where I've added some soil, some low spots at the ground level. And now it's time to go ahead and put in the underlayment. And I'll be sharing that with you in part two of this video series. We'll be putting down the underlayment as well as the pond liner. So stay tuned for that. I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you're having a great day and I'll be talking to you again soon. Take care. <music>